Yo guys, we're back at it again. And here you are and here I am. Let's freaking do this guys. You've been asking for some bass tutorials. So here we are. And stay till the end to find out what's coming next guys. Today we're gonna talk about this sausage Toasty. that we all want. All sausage boys will be happy after this video. We're gonna go directly into the bass. First we're gonna listen with the drums only. Uh, no, we're not. We're gonna listen with the bass and the drums together. Let's freaking go. And with the guitars as well. Hello there. So here we are. This is the sound. Let me get higher. Yes, uh, on the chair, in the chair. So we're gonna check out the bass without the plugins, and we're gonna go into the Loki Bass software instrument as well. Let's freaking listen without the plugins, so we can hear. And let's play without the guitars and with the drums first. And bass only. And let's put on the plugins, sounds like this. Alright, so we're gonna go through the plugins one by one. Let's do a quick resume and turn on each plugin. Yeah, I have the gain plugin here just to automate the volume on the track. We will remove this one for now. Okay guys, let's check out the Loki plugin I have here. So it's the Loki Bass 2, Loki 2 Bass, Loki Bass 2, yeah, it says here. So let's check out the presets. They have a couple of presets here. I choose the Loki Glass 1 for this one. I think the Time Wizard is nice as well. But for this, we're going with the Loki Glass. So, this is how it looks when you open it. You have a couple of options here. We're gonna check out the tone option. And let's do the knob so you can see my settings. It's kind of a not so much lows, guys. Mid mid, some highs and some air. I crank the highs a bit and I take down the air a bit. The output is just a volume knob. And then I have the enforce button enabled here, so. I get a sinus wave to add some bass, man. Some sub frequencies, yes. Let's freaking do this, man. Here below I added some artificial attack, uh, or quite a lot. And then I did not enforce the volume or devour the attack. Yeah, it gets more synth vibe if you turn this up. I leave them uh, like that. And we go with the sinus wave. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, on the playing side here, I, I think you have the standard settings for this one. A bit of string noise, a bit of left, whoopsie doopsie, bit of left hand, bit of mute, just to get that realism, guys. But we don't want that human error, guys. We want the AI working for us, man. Let's go. Okay, guys, let's move on to the first plugin here. We have a compressor. And this one is not active at the moment because it's sidechain to the kick bus I have here. So let's turn on the drums. So it's working kind of a 5 dB reduction. And you can see the settings here. I want it to uh, be quick, quick attack, quick relief. I just want the attack to push through with that. Uh, with a with a with a with a Ooh. kick. Yeah. So this compressor is just for uh, side chaining the kick. Next we have the compressor, the CLA 2A. So this one is in limit mode because we want that sausage, you know, sausage voice. And it's working. Uh, you can see. I think I can zoom in for you as well if you want to see it more. And then we have the gain knob at around 40 and the peak reduction to 
could use those picks and make it a sausage, you know, at 50. This is just for the display. And I turned off the analog mode. Okay, let's move on to the Pro Q3 and let's listen. So the EQ is uh, always interesting, so here we have a sidechain as well to the same kick sum, kick bus, where I have it sidechain on the 63 hertz. I want it to, I want the kick to push through and uh, I want it to do so dynamically. I have taken away some of the, the Burke sounds, you know, uh, Burke, do you know what Burke is? Burke is a burk, in Sweden we have burk. You know, you uh, place your uh, food in burks. Uh, it looks like this, and you can have stuff in it. You know, you can have this stuff, and you can have like this, and you can have everything in these burks. And these burks sound trash, Bully. so this area often sounds burk Bully. and trash. So that's why I call it burk, burk sound. And then I have some gains here on the 800 hertz. You want that scrammel, you know, you know that um, uh, this. So it's a lot of sub that we cut away with this uh, side chained EQ band. We also have some perks. Let's see, listen. Low growl that we don't want. That's this just takes uh, space in the mix. And a bit of ringing notes as well. We have a ringing notes up here. here. Here's the ringing note. And here the guitars are coming through a bit, so we want that to go down. So the guitars can push through and we can have a nice balance. I actually added a little bit of high end as well, and then I cut from 6,000 in a 18 decibel per octave slope. Okay, let's go to the Saturn. This is a nice. nice one. So this is a multi-band saturation plugin. Let's put up the volume. So as you can hear, it does quite a lot here to the sound. The trick here is to not have no drive in the low lows of the bass. And I have a slope here at the 500 hertz area. And I crank the drive a little bit here. Let's listen. So you want that little growling sound, man. And at the highs, I boost even more. So focus the saturation on the highs and the mid. You can, if you don't own this plugin, you can do this by separating the track. So we have two looky tracks like this. You duplicate and you just copy the MIDI data like this. So, and then you have one for the lows and then for the highs, and you, you put an EQ before. So if you do like this, yeah, if you, let's say you have the built-in distortion here, if you have the overdrive, you have to cut out the lows, you know, and then saturate the highs on this one, and on the other one, you do the opposite, and you have only the lows, and you don't saturate. Let's listen to the bands again. Okay, let's move on to the next plugin. It's the multiband compression. And this one is, uh, is exciting too, man. Let's freaking go, man. So 
on this one I want to control the highs a bit, wanted to make it a bit more sausage. Let's solo the band that we are working with. So this is the classic 4K area that we've been talking about. Quite a little bit above that, but um, where the harsh notes are, so I want to control them. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm compressing, so it, it, there's no expanding here, as you can see. You can see all the settings here. I will go through the bands. So this is kind of for safety, but uh, yeah, you could argue that this could work a bit more, actually. Let's try it out, man. Got a little bit more aggressive actually you lost subs all right guys let's freaking go to the next one this is a funny one if you have the l2 so what i'm doing here i want it to be a bit more sausage i'm practically using this as a clipper kind of so i have the one to one scale activated here it's called something let's yeah the unity game button button so what i'm doing here essentially is activating this button and then just cranking up the gain and the limiter will push down the peaks, as you can see here. So, to make it even more sausage. You could do this in uh, other ways as well. You know, you could uh, have another limiter to work, you know, properly or compressor and make it work hard, you know. And I have this in the end just to push, push it all together, you know, all the sounds, all the saturation, you know, and, uh, and stuff we have. The last one, we have the Q3 here and I've only taken away some high end. So from 5k, I did a slope, a 12 dB per octave slope. Let's listen with and without. So I wanted to take out some of that sizzle to make room for other stuff, you know, vocals or stuff like that. Let's freaking listen with everything, man. Let's go freaking go, man. system with the guitars and bass only. A little trick I will show you in the in logic is the freeze function. So it's a knob that you can find here and then you can freeze tracks so if you want to save cpu you can just freeze it and it will bounce in the background kind of the backside is that you can't change any of the settings no, no. you have to unfreeze to to change but if you're you know like me satisfied with the sound you could freeze it to save some space for your cpu and again the sound is a lot to do with my master chain here we will look into that in another video but before you leave i have some tips for the midi as well if you would like it to check out the man So in this particular plugin, Loki, we have D sharp zero, I think, is muting the tone that's above it. This note is muted while this one is active. So this one, you know, has no mute because it has no tone underneath it. And the arrangement is a big thing here as well. You know, should it be long or short notes? I try to match the note length with my guitars. And also when I mute with my guitars, I mute with the bass. And also a quick tip is, which octave are you playing in? Let's check out this one. 
So to make a little bigger effect here, I have this riff over here, ah, you can barely see, in another octave in the bass. So if you check down here on my MIDI data, you can see that this here, I can, like this, like all this is an octave up, and then it drops down an octave below here. So it goes from this, and then like, boom, and it creates this nice effect. Let's listen. Especially if you have good speakers, you can hear that uh, it gets more growly and the guitars get a little more space. But I kind of like the octave up as well, it's very nasty. Often I make the bass play the same as the guitars, but sometimes I do some different things with it. Especially if the guitars play some really high, high notes, you know, Villetta style. And at last, I have this modifier here, it's actually for my jam stick that I have. So it's a kind of mini midi guitar, just like this. And this makes it so I can play mute sounds. Maybe I can dig into that in another video. Okay, thanks guys for watching on this one, you know. Next time we will be checking out the drums, you know. <laughs> Tell me what you think of this one. We will see you in the next video. Ho ho. Goodbye!